The first proposition is done like this. So this and and the it became the book is very famous and every most people have memorized at least some of the propositions. So this is how it is written. So proposition a book one proposition one. So it will be written like one one. So this is thing how to draw an equilateral triangle. Okay, so he has already defined an equilateral triangle, a triangle where all the three sides are equal. So this is what you do. You take a point and join it. How do you know what's a point? It has been defined. How do you know how to draw a line? It has been defined. How do you draw a line? Well, it has been mentioned in the postulate five. File to draw a line, you just join them. Okay. Now what you do, you draw a circle. How do you draw a circle? It has been mentioned in postulate where you have a center, you can just draw it. So it's mentioned here. It's mentioned here to describe a circle with any center and radius. If you know the center and radius, you can draw it. So with this center, you draw a circle. You know how to draw this circle from postulate 3. So if this is A, this is B. Now here, from this center and this, draw another circle. Okay, we also know this, this roughly. Okay, you know that this is also from postulate 3 how to draw a circle. Now they said when they intersect at a point, if you join them, there will be a line. How do you know if you join them, it's a line? Postulate 1. We know that when you join two points, it's a line. Okay, then we can also join this postulate 1. Now, for this first circle, we know that this is equal to this because the, the radii of this circle. How do you know? The definition of the circle says in a circle, the radii are equal. He has defined it. So we can say AB equals to AC. Again, in the second circle, they are also the radii are equal. How do you know? He has defined it. That, that, that is the definition 15. He has defined it. So that means AB equals to BC. Now, look here. The same thing. Two things equal to the same thing must be equal to each other. With AC equals to AB and BC equals to uh, AB. So we have this axiom 1. So AC must be equal to BC. So that means it's an equilateral triangle. It's pretty cool. That's how he did it. So the structure of the book. So what he did, he wrote altogether 13 books or 13 chapters and there are 465 propositions. That means theorems and constructions. 465 propositions. Now, they are broken down into these chapters. Now the first one, the first chapter was about these are about shapes. So the first four books, they are about shapes. Uh, book one and book two, they are about angles and triangles. And book three is about circles. So this is about circles. Then we have book four. Book four is really about constructing some sort of a regular polygon. So that's, that's about construction. So these are about polygons. So polygons, polygons could be three-sided figure, four-sided figure, five-sided figure. So these are about angles and triangles and parallel lines. So triangles, parallel lines, angles. So that's what it is about. And there are some famous propositions. First of all, proposition, book one, proposition five, one five, it shows the base angles. If it's an isosceles triangle, then the base angle should be equal. Then in uh, 127, Book 1, Proposition 27, talks about the parallel lines. If it's, you know, if two lines are parallel and the third line joins them, these are alternate angles. Is 129, called the converse of uh, 127. Then here, this is pretty interesting, because here he uses the famous fifth postulate, where he talks about uh, how does a parallel, parallel lines work. So here, for the first time, he uses it, and for the rest of the book, he keeps using this concept because you have to understand he starts with definition, postulates, axioms, then starts with the first proposition, then uses everything else for the second proposition, then uses everything else for the third proposition. That's how he builds up the book. So then another famous uh, thing is Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem is book 147 where he proves the Pythagorean theorem himself where he says that if it's a right angle triangle, then uh, C square equals A square plus B square. Square of the one side is sum of the square of the other side. And in proposition 148, he ends book 1 with this. He does the converse. 
So if c square equals to a square plus b square, then it must be a right angle triangle. That's what he does. Another famous uh, proposition is 132, where he proves he thought he, why did you wait for uh, 32 prop 31 propositions and then he proved that the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degree. He mentioned two right angles because at that time degree didn't, he didn't know algebra degrees or anything. So sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degree. He waited for up to 32 propositions until he proved this. Then the next one, uh, book 5, book 6, book 7. Uh, so book 6, they deal with similarity, similar figures. Similarity. Similarity is very, very important. You have to understand. With the concept of trigonom uh, with the concept of uh, Pythagorean theorem and similarity, we have trigonometry. The sine ratio, cos ratio, tan ratio. It comes from the concept of Pythagorean theorem and similarity. That's how it works. Then uh, book seven is interesting because then these are about number theory. These books are not just about uh, geometry there but number theory 5 to 10 there are a lot about number theory for example book 7 book 7 we have a proposition which is 7 2 this proposition is what do you do about HCF how do you find HCF highest common factor and he, here he also in book 7 he has definition of a prime number even number odd number he defines prime number as uh, a whole number greater than 1 that can be divided by itself and 1 and he mentions that any composite number is something that can be broken down into prime number. Uh, for example, uh, 2 is a prime number because it can be divided by, it's a number greater than 1 and it can be divided by itself and 1 and no other number. 12 is a composite number because you can break it down into prime numbers. 2 into 2, 4, 4 into 3, 12. So that's a composite number. So this is about number theory. And uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about polygons. So these are regular polygons. Uh, regular polygons means their sides are equal. So this is a three-sided figure. Regular polygon means it's a three-sided figure and they're equal. This is a square. Another regular polygon where each of the sides are equal. This is a pentagon, five. Each of the five sides are equal. This is a hexagon. Now, in the 13th book, he talks about solids cannot be more than five regular solids also known as platonic solids so he's saying that just like uh, what people believed before that there can be only five regular solids so one solid can be like this equilateral triangle four faces equilateral triangle eight faces meaning it is made up of eight equilateral triangles then 20 faces, 20 equilateral triangles. Then you have 6 faces, 6 squares, 12 faces, 12 regular pentagons. So that's what he said. And this is, this is what it looks like. So he said that this tetrahedron is made up of uh, 4 regular pentagons. Then we have cube, then we have octahedron. Octa, octa means 8, dodecahedron, do means uh, 2. Deca means 10, so 12, 12 hedron, uh, icosahedron, I think. This is how it works. So it means, he said, there cannot be more than five of these regular figures. So if you take a look here, so this is what it looks like. So if you turn this around, you, you will see that it has uh, one, two, three, four faces. This is a cube. It has six faces made up of planes. This is a octahedron. It is like one pyramid above another. Uh, this is a dodecahedron. It is made up of pentagons, regular pentagons. And again, uh, this is made up of, made up of uh, equilateral triangles. If you want to buy the book, you can get uh, one uh, good print is by uh, Greenland Press. They have this uh, book called Euclid's Elements. And they don't have any explanation or anything. They just have the propositions. They have the straightforward translation. And there's another book, a small pocket book, like it's called The Bones. It doesn't have any proof. It just have the names of the propositions, and that's the list, so that you, it's a quick reference. So these two are pretty. Uh, at this moment, they're the only one around that is good. So this is what it is. Geometry is the study of shapes and also it's about logic. 
so the book started with you know definitions so we have definitions then we have postulates then we have axioms and then we have the propositions theorems and constructions altogether there are 465 propositions in the elements and these are divided into 13 books or chapters the first four books deal with shapes book 3 deals with circles and book 4 deals with constructing regular polygons the next we have 5 to 10 that deal with numbers and they also deal with uh, similarity and proportions let me tell you something about similarity you have to understand geometry is also about art and if something looks beautiful naturally uh, that is because it is symmetric let me give an example this picture is possible because it is repetition and it has patterns it is symmetric symmetric means if you draw a line across it right here you will see that they're exactly the same and this is also true in art uh, in paintings, in portrait, and also in photography, also in cartoons, animation, to make the hero look more appealing. It has to be symmetric. That's what they do. Look here, Superman looks symmetric. And the reason we find him appealing is because he's symmetric. So that's, that's how it works. Then we have books 11 to 13 that deals with solids and book 13 deals with the regular solids Euclid proved that there cannot be more than five regular solids or the platonic solids so what needs to be understood and remembered is first of all the concept of the angles angles it's a measure between two lines then we have to know about by understanding the angles we then we have to know about the shapes then using the shapes we have the solids we need to know about the spaces they occupy the areas and the solids and the volumes then uh, we have to know similarity a very important concept for later on trigonometry then we have circles special attention has been given to circles also later on we see this in the study of trigonometry we have to know about some construction construction using the Euclidean tools the compass and the scale so that's all that can be used the compass and the scale because you have to understand we cannot use protractor or any other thing because Euclid didn't have that so that's geometry in a nutshell